Thank you. Uh, my name is Timur Tulitz. Um, I work for CoreLite. I am one of the core maintainers on Zeek. Um, that's woe to low wits. If you're totally confused, totally confused by the J in the name, it gets everybody, I promise. Um, I have been working on Zeek for about three and a half years. Um, I like to describe my job as taking things apart and putting them back together again in better ways. Um, like Keith said, I rewrote the main I.O. loop in Zeek. Uh, I don't even want to talk about it. That was a long, long thing. Um, today, uh, if, you, if you've seen my previous talks, they generally uh, talk about features, things that are coming up. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go a different direction this week and talk about uh, automated bug finding with fuzzers. I brought a special guest with me. Uh, their name is OSS Fuzz. Um, so from a high level, uh, what is fuzzing? Um, the, the easy thing is uh, you, you take a small program, um, you give uh, the fuzzing runtime an entry point into your code. For Zeek, that's real easy. We read network packets. There's an entry point into your code. Uh, you provide a basic set of data that exercises that entry point. Uh, in the fuzzing world, this is known as a, corpor a corpus. Um, you give that to a, to a fuzzing runtime. The runtime sticks your corpus into your, into your fuzzer program and uh, tells you if it crashed. And then it takes your data and it modifies it slightly, usually in some sort of structured fashion. Um, maybe it duplicates the data twice. Maybe it modifies a couple of bytes here and there. Maybe it modifies a bit here and there. Maybe it randomly decides to stick 200,000 null, bit, null bytes into the middle of what it thinks is a string. Um, then it sticks that, that modified data back into your fuzzer program. Again, tells you if it crashed or not. And then it does this over and over and over and over and over, and over again until it finally gives you something bad. Um, there's a bunch of different runtimes. The, the big three, uh, libfuzzer, which is written by the team at, at LLVM, um, hongfuzz, which is uh, maintained by Google, and there's one called American Fuzzy Lop, which is the awesome name, uh, which is uh, the AFL is maintained by Google now. Uh, AFL++ is a, a better fork of that that's maintained by a, a third party team. Um, so Google has a program that they provide to the open source community called OSS Fuzz. And this automates the boring bits. Uh, it implements an architecture for automated fuzzing. So it's free for open source projects. I looked uh, yesterday afternoon and there are about 800 projects taking part in this program now. And Pretty much every big open source project you've ever heard of is, is in there. Curl is in there, Firefox, OpenSSH, OpenSSL. Pick something, they're, they're probably using OSS Fuzz in one way or another. Uh, they provide automated crash and error reporting to you. They provide automated code coverage reports. Um, and Google will run it for you for free. We uh, get a build about every 24 hours um, they usually send me reports overnight, my time, which is super fun to wake up on a Saturday morning and have 10 new fuzzer bugs in your email. Um, or you can actually, uh, they have the whole setup, you can actually download the whole thing and run it locally. If you've got a machine that's got you know 200 CPUs sitting idle, put it to work. It does an amazing job. Um, so you take Zeek and you take OSS Fuzz and, and you mash them together and, and what you get out of that is, is bugs. Lots and lots of bugs. Um, when we added, we added Zeek to, uh, to OSS Fuzz in May of 2020, and adding a project to, to OSS Fuzz is real easy. There's a YAML file you commit to their repo, and it's basically a description of, of, of your maintainer, basically gives a list of email addresses for your maintainers who get the the reports, um, some information about what sanitizers you want to run, what, what fuzzing runtimes you want to use. They support all three of the big ones. Um, and you commit a script that effectively tells you, tells them, here's how you build my code, and here's how you run my fuzzers, and uh, here's how you stick the corpus data in there. Uh, you submit that as a PR to their, to their repository, and they almost always accept every change I give to them without really any questions. Um, and off it goes, and you start getting reports. Uh, Zeek implements uh, a set of fuzzers for common analyzers. 
currently off the top of my head, I'm going to try to remember all of these. We do HTTP, DNS, FTP, IMAP, SMTP, and POP3. And I think that's the six major ones. And then we have a, we have a general packet fuzzer that just, like I said, uses the packet, basically what, what PCAP's going through. We just stick Ethernet packets in there. Um, we can generate corpus data from uh, sample PCAPs. Uh, Justin wrote a great tool called PCAP Simplify that takes a PCAP and turns it into what the fuzzers are expecting um, and actually has one that goes the reverse too, which I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, and OSS Fuzz also has a way of generating corpus data from just basically a string of a, a, a list of strings. For the POP3 fuzzer, that's how we generated the corpus for them is we gave them all of the command strings that you can send in a, in a POP in, a, in POP packets. Uh, I don't know, there's like 15 of them, I don't remember. Uh, and it went off and did its, its own thing with them. Um, surprisingly, for as, for as simple as all that sounds, um, Zeek analyzer entry points are actually sort of hard. Um, we would like to be able to just pull up the HTTP analyzer and get a packet and stuff it immediately straight into the HTTP analyzer, but it turns out uh, that doesn't work very well in, in, in some cases. Um, we actually just fixed something in the fuzzers just recently because the HTTP analyzer and a couple others have an analyzer above them called content line that kind of prevents an analyzer from getting things that are honestly just flat garbage. And uh, without content line being there, you get asserts down inside the HTTP analyzer that don't make any sense whatsoever. And so we had to kind of rework how we do our, how we were doing the fuzzers. And it's actually considerably more stable now. I mean, fixed like three few really easy bugs by just not doing that anymore. Um, on the other hand, expanding to new analyzers is really easy. Uh, we have recently added a, a generic method for making new analyzers. Uh, you commit one line change to a CMake file, and you add a zip file containing your corpus data. And with that, OSS Fuzz will pick it up off of master, and the next build will use your fuzzer and, and, start, uh, and start finding bugs for you, potentially. There are some rules for handling the things that come out of, out of OSS Fuzz, and unfortunately, the first rule is secrecy. Because these bugs uh, can be received as packets over the network, most of them are considered denial of service vectors. Um, if you can get Zeek to crash, it's not scanning your network for anything. If you can get Zeek to hang indefinitely, it's not scanning your network for anything. Um, so, in that regard, we don't want to release these out in the wild. You know, we don't want to, we don't want to put up a GitHub issue that says, hey, we got this giant bug, here's how to reproduce it. Um, so the bugs are, are triaged and fixed in a private repository. Um, we generally tend to batch them up into five or six at a time and then they get put out in patch releases. Uh, Google's disclosure policy says that they will make all bugs public within 90 days, whether or not they're fixed, which kind of kicks us in the butt to get them fixed in some sort of rapidity. Um, but they also will make them public immediately after, they are, after they're verified as fixed. We actually had one that just got fixed this morning, um, an SMTP thing that went in that we decided it wasn't a super high severity. We had already fixed the HTTP version of it, so we fixed that one. Um, we have discussed internally, um, we've been batting it around, we talked even just this week about whether we should be making those Zeek security issues immediately public also, so that you can see this is the backtrace that we were getting, this is the test case, here's a PCAP version that reproduces it, um, and that especially helps other teams. Uh, we've been talking with the guys at Suricata about this, about, you know, we have a PCAP that obviously causes Zeke, Zeke issues. You know, maybe other teams would like to see those PCAPs too. That, and, and can, is, is your, are your tool, is your tooling having problems with these PCAPs? Um, we haven't completely just we haven't completely figured out how we're gonna do this yet, but it, it is definitely on our radar and we're, we're kind of definitely planning to do that. Um, this is a great place to talk about the private distribution group. Um, there's a, if you look at the Zeek security policy, there is a, a group that organizations can join. Um, those organizations get sort of early access to 
the patches that are coming out in, in, in patch releases. So when you know, 503 is coming, I don't want to give a timeline, but probably pretty soon, um, those organizations will get patch files ahead of time. Um, basically saying, hey, you know, like this, we know, we're aware of these bugs. Here you go. Um, if you want to join that group, if that sounds like something interesting to you, um, catch me or one of the team uh, later on and we'll, we'll talk about it. Or you can look at the, the Zeek security policy. I'll have a link later in this. Um, and uh, it has more information on how to, on how to get into that. Um, so what have we found here? Um, when the original set of fuzzers went in in May 2020, OSS fuzz immediately blasted us with 24 new bugs, like right off, right off the top. This doesn't include a bunch of bugs that we fixed when we were doing our initial testing of the fuzzers. Uh, I don't know how many, Justin, how many were there? There were like another like 10 or 15 that we, we fixed before we even committed it to OSS fuzz to start doing their automated testing. So you, you figure about like 40 bugs right off the top. Um, in August of 2020, sort of in the summer of 2022, we added another, another six fuzzers and fixed a bunch of bugs in the old ones. Um, and it gave us another 19. The way that OSS fuzz works is sometimes it'll run into a bug that blocks any process from being made. So when you fix that bug, oh, hey, look, now I can start making progress again. Here's five more. And one of those will be that. And you'll fix one and they'll go, oh, here's, here's three or four more. So you, you kind of wait to reach, you kind of take these like steps and you kind of finally reach into a steady state where things are great and you're not getting, you're not getting a whole lot of bugs anymore. From the original set of fuzzers, I don't know how long it took us. It was probably about six months before we reached a steady state where we were getting a bug every, every couple of days. And you start getting them about every couple of months. Um, the, one of the bug fixes we fixed just recently was uh, we discovered that the fuzzers, because the way the fuzzers start up, they don't go through the normal Zeek process startup. So they don't instantiate all the, all the event handlers. So when, a when an analyzer would go down through and it would reach some code where it was supposed to call an event handler, we'd just go, oh, we'll just skip this. There's no event handler for this. Um, which broke, you know, didn't look very good on coverage numbers. So we kind of tricked the fuzzers now into believing that all the event handlers exist even though there's no actual scripts to run. But it does try to call that code, which uh, if you've been watching the, Zeek secure, the, the, the patch releases recently, you've seen a bunch of bugs in raw packet. Yeah, uh, we now enable the raw packet uh, event handler and are getting lots of fun things out of that. Uh, we're planning to widely expand the fuzzer coverage uh, to the remaining packet and protocol analyzers pretty soon. I, I, again, timelines, I, I don't know. Um, that means another 15 or so, I don't know, analyzers that will be now being fuzzed that weren't being fuzzed before, uh, which means more bugs and more fixes and more patch releases. Uh, so I'm sorry the patch releases are coming really, really quick lately, but there's going to be more of them. 503 is going to come out soon. 504 is probably going to come out very, very quickly and so on and so forth. Uh, we're kind of investigating ways to fuzz things beyond just analyzers. The file analyzers, we haven't touched at all. Um, why limit us, limit ourselves to just analyzers? Why not the input framework? How about, uh, how about the regex parser, the pattern parser? Um, I think we kind of talked about doing script parser, the script parser at some point in time or another. But Basically, anywhere you can find a, a function that I can call, that I can, I can stuff data into, that's a great place to try to fuzz something and let, let OSS fuzz make stupid, broken data and stick it in there, too. Um, because everybody else has been made, call, made callbacks to Microsoft pro presentation from this morning. Um, Microsoft mentioned in theirs that they're helping us out here, too. They have their own, or their own fuzzing set up within Microsoft and are in the, in the conversations we've had with them are actively running fuzzers on, on Zeek and are intending to make reports of their, of their buggers. Um, so real quick demo, I just want to show some examples of this. Um, 
So this is a bug in the NVT analyzer. The NVT analyzer is instantiated by the FTP analyzer. Um, this is the report you get from them. It's, it's got a kind of a, a small stack trace, um, what, what fuzzer it came out of. Uh, they give you a minimized test case. If you download this and you stick it into the fuzzer binary, it will do what it's, what it's going to do down here at the bottom. Um, this one was a recursive parsing bug. And uh, you eventually got into a stack overflow and Z crashes because of it. Um, and the bug was that uh, the MVT analyzer, here's the, the commit that fixes it. The MVT analyzer is designed to basically look at the data. If it doesn't find what it's looking for, step forward one byte and then recursively call itself again. And then step forward one byte and then recursively call itself again. Well, OSS files generated a, a 966 kilobyte file and stuffed it into the NVT analyzer. And we tried to, we tried to call uh, that recursive function, I don't know, 800 times. And it ran out of memory and crashed C. Um, this one was fixed clear back in 3.2. Uh, OSS fuzz, uh, by default, sets a timeout for the processes. So after 60 seconds, it will just kill it and give up and tell you where it was when it tried to kill it. Uh, this bug was in the DNS in the DNS analyzer when it was trying to power, parse an, uh, an eDNS uh, option. And it turned out that OSS fuzz gave us a packet uh, that had enough bytes in it to pretend to be an option, but it had a zero length field. And our code said, OK, well, I got a zero length. I'm going to step forward zero bytes. I've still got data to process. And then it got it back and said, oh, I got zero bytes. I'm going to just, just try it again. And did that forever until uh, it hung forever. And uh, the fuzzer eventually killed it. Um, I mentioned the coverage data. So when we initial, this is the very first build that OSS fuzz did for us. We have about 9% of, of code coverage. Um, after this is the build from uh, Sunday, I think. And we're up to 22.6%. To These numbers are widely, wildly dependent on what fuzzers you have implemented, what your corpus data looks like, what corpus data the fuzzer system has generated for you. Um, we're expecting these numbers to go up quite a bit once we expand the coverage. Um, so back to the back to the slides. Um, here's some more links. I'm not going to go through all of these. If you want it, we'll, we'll have these slides for you later. Um, the, in here is the, the link to the Zeek security release process if you want to want to look at that. Um, I kind of lied at the beginning that I wasn't going to talk about feature stuff, but I wanted to stick this in here because it's, it's really pretty cool. Um, I've been recently poking about in, the, in LLDB, which is the, the debugger that comes with Clang, and realizing that uh, debugging Zeek is kind of a pain in the ass sometimes, especially when it comes to things like scripts and biffs. Um, so I, I wrote a script for, for LLDB so that when you crash Zeek in a script function, uh, it actually spits out where, what script you were on, what line you were on, and the actual line of script that crashed, which is super useful. So you don't have to go in and grab the location object and print out the location object. And then you go open the file and look at where it was that it crashed. Now you just get it in the debugger. And then when you were stepping through BIFs, if you ever uh, had a crash in a BIF, or you set a breakpoint in a BIF, and all it ever told you was, here's your BIF number, and, or here's your BIF file, and here's the line number, go figure it out yourself. Um, I made a two-line change to BIF CL this morning uh, that actually got committed this afternoon. Um, now uh, LLVM dumps nice uh, information for you about where you were in the BIF when it, when it uh, broke. Um, I think these things could happen for GDB too if you're still a person that uses GDB. But I've looked at the GDB API and I don't like it. And I couldn't figure out how to make this easily. Uh, but if you're one of those people, I, we can probably figure it out. Um, and that's all my slides. Uh, my dog Simon and I would like to know if you have any questions. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. Any questions?